Publishers like EA and similar companies have insisted time and again that single-player games or non-live service games just don't really have a place in the industry, that the future lies in live services, that customers and players are not as interested in non-live service experiences as we once were. And time and again, this propaganda, this notion has been proven wrong as a number of single player or non live service experiences have gone on to sell gangbusters. And meanwhile, these companies are continuing to push for the live service vacation, if that's a word, of their franchises. Ubisoft recently announced, you know, Assassin's Creed Infinity, which turns Assassin's Creed into a platform. And basically, it feels like Assassin's Creed now is becoming live service. And we all know how invested EA has been in live services. More recently, they have been a little more flexible about releasing single player titles after games like Jedi Fallen Order, an EA published release, proved EA wrong. But today I want to focus on Elden Ring, a game that is just completely pure in its integrity. It doesn't feel like it was made out of greed. It really feels like it was made out of passion and love. And like it's the culmination of all of FromSoft's learnings from all of their past games. I've already told you about the massively positive critical reception with an average meta score of 96% across both Metacritic and OpenCritic. And then beyond that, players have been engaged with this game in a way that even a lot of live services fail to do with even today, 24 hour peaks looking like it's close to the all-time peak, the 24-hour peak as of the recording of this video, sitting at over 800,000 still, even two weeks after launch, tons of people are playing this title. And I mentioned before how the all-time peak actually increased throughout the course of the week and a half since the game's launch. Daniel Ahmad detailed in this series of tweets how on day one, Elden Ring managed to accrue 765,000 peak concurrent players on Steam versus 130k for Dark Souls 3 and 125k for Sekiro. And then Twitch viewership also peaked tremendously, 910,000 peak concurrent viewers versus 280,000 for Sekiro and 276,000 for Dark Souls 3. And when it comes to Steam concurrent players, you can see how much that number has grown from 750 some thousand on day one to now a whopping 952,523 all-time peak accrued in the past few days or so. Now today we have an update from the NPD regarding how well Elden Ring performed in North America compared to all these other major games and it is a smash hit, to put it lightly. This already seemed apparent based on sales stats from other regions like the UK where Elden Ring became the biggest non-FIFA or Call of Duty launch since Red Dead Redemption 2. And the crazy part is that in the UK, Elden Ring's week one sales were bigger than Cyberpunk 2077. And then in Japan, Elden Ring has also done incredibly well with its week one sales being at 278,000 copies, roughly. And this is apparently from software's strongest first week performance of all time, says Nibel, if I'm not mistaken, and so far nobody's been able to dispute that. And then when it comes to Steam, beyond the concurrent players just doing gangbusters, according to Benji Sales here, Elden Ring has been the number one best-selling game for two weeks straight so far. And hell, who knows, we might see this streak carry through uh, a third week. And that finally brings us to the NPD stats, where you can see right here, as reported by VentureBeat, February 2022 NPD, Elden Ring is a smash hit. Plenty of headlines like these running amok. And all of this information comes from Matt Piscatella, who is a part of the NPD group. He tweeted a summary of all their discovery surrounding February 2022 results in terms of video game sales. And when it comes to Elden Ring, yeah, very impressive stuff. Elden Ring debuted as both the best selling game of February 2022, as well as 2022 year to date. Launch month sales of Elden Ring were the second highest for any track title released in the past 12 months, trailing only Call of Duty Vanguard released in November of 2021. But wait, there is more. After one month in market, Elden Ring ranked as the fifth best-selling game of the 12-month period ending in February of 2022. Elden Ring ranked first on Steam and Xbox platforms in February while placing second on PlayStation. For non-life service games, these kinds of results and numbers are quite rare. And we can see for ourselves here in the following chart, this one details February 2022's 
top 20 video games in the US, meaning from February 1st. And keep in mind, Elden Ring came out in late February. So within February, it's only had a couple of days worth of data registered, and even then, it's still topping charts, coming at number one when it comes to February 2022 sales. And then moving on, we have year-to-date 2022 sales, meaning this is data from the first day, January 1st of 2022. And within that range, even, Elden Ring, despite only having a few days worth of data registered by the NPD group, came out on top at number one. Last but not least is this chart showing the top 10 video games in the time frame of 12 months ending on February of 2022, basically referring to the fiscal year that started in February of 2021 and ended in February of 2022. So we're looking at 12 months worth of data of which Elden Ring only encompasses a couple of days because again, this is data that was taken at the end of February and Elden Ring came out right around that time. Even looking at data of the past 12 months with Elden Ring being at a disadvantage, it still managed to place fifth Keep in mind that all of these games have had much longer time for its sales to build up. Considering all that, the fact that Elden Ring managed to place fifth at all in this chart is damn impressive. And give it a little bit longer, and I have a distinct feeling that Elden Ring is going to be topping these charts even better than we're seeing right here. And to reiterate what Matt Piscatella said here about launch month sales of Elden Ring being the second highest for any track title in the past 12 months, another Twitter user, Benji Sales, echoed this by saying via NPD, Elden Ring is the second biggest launch for any game of the last 12 months in the US behind only Call of Duty Vanguard. So lifetime sales in the past 12 months, Elden Ring places fifth for now, before more sales data comes in as more weeks and months come to pass. But when it comes to the time frame of how many units sold in the month that the game was launched in, Elden Ring places second biggest launch month in this category in the past 12 months behind only Call of Duty Vanguard. And again, if Elden Ring had come out earlier in February, those numbers might have been significantly bigger. Oh, but there's more. Its launch units were so big in only one month, it already surpassed the lifetime sales of Battlefield 2042, Far Cry 6, and Resident Evil Village in revenue. With all the touting that EA does about how live services are the future and with how complacent Ubisoft has become with their open world structure, and them seeming to think that this is the way towards success, you know, monetization implementations in uh, shadily created or shadily designed titles or games that have become too complacent and are just kind of cash grabbing it in. It's just incredibly refreshing to see a game like Elden Ring that is none of these things. It's not a live service. It's not implementing any shady monetization. It's not super complacent in its game design and does things that other open world games don't. To see a game like this just show that people aren't just interested in live services or the same kind of design over and over and over again and that they like their experiences to be pushed and they like their level of challenge to be pushed and they like to explore and not be handheld throughout the whole experience and all these things. The fact that a game like this is proving that it can sell and that notions of these kinds of games dying off or not belonging in the industry or not being able to achieve success, the fact that all those notions and all this BS is proven wrong to me is very satisfying. This isn't just one of the best-selling games of February 2022 or a fiscal year 2022. This is one of the best-selling games ever. And it's one of those, you know, single-player focus or at the very least non-life service games that we have been told we are no longer interested in anymore. And yet, look at the way the audience has been reacting both critically and the level of engagement that this game continues to see. That's because people are having fun with this game. It doesn't feel like their fun is being hampered by all of these schemes. It doesn't feel like they're being nickel and dime constantly. They can just get lost in this world and have an experience that is just uniquely from soft and that pushes boundaries in areas that other games are afraid to push. And so I hope Elden Ring becomes a beacon of light that will shine the idea that companies should take more risks and dispense with this notion that the future only resides in live services. I have no problems with live services existing 
But it's just the mentality of that's all the future can be that really bothers me when it's very clear that plenty of non-live service games, single-player focused games or single-player games with certain multiplayer components, that they all have something to say too and that they can all be brilliant in some way. It's just a matter of making a good game. The genre is irrelevant to what makes a good game good, what makes a fun game good. As long as you're not being a dick to your players for the sake of greed and monetization, and as long as it's a good game, I'm telling you, people will buy it, they'll talk about it, and people will hear about it, and then they'll play it, and then you get something really, really special, like Elden Ring, among plenty of other special titles that have released in the years since EA has insisted that live services are the only way to go, that we don't like these types of games anymore. EA among many other companies as well. Hopefully that'll encourage more companies to be leaders instead of followers of trends. Leaders of, you know, new compelling experiences or refined versions of existing experiences rather than followers of trends that they hope will easily make them money uh, that they hope will, you know, be the next gold rush that they can cash in on. Or at the very least, that's one man's take on everything. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on Elden Ring's success and the game experience of playing Elden Ring. If you have checked out the title, share your thoughts in the comments below. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.